Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jock from Attraction Marketing, and this is the Attraction Marketing Show. And tonight we've got an amazing guest. Uh, this is a, I would like to say, a colleague that I met in a, a business group um, who is has been marketing for years and also is a mindset coach, and she'll tell you all about her. And we're going to talk today about. Uh, YouTube and marketing and all sorts of things. It's going to be very relaxed. I have my wine for this evening. She has her beer and we're just going to get right into it. So Nicolette Moore, welcome to Attraction Marketing. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you doing this evening? Not too bad. I was glad when we, we first connected there and I saw that you had a beer in your hand. I thought, you know what, if you've got a beer in your hand, I'm going to go and open the wine. Go and open the wine. So, yes. tell everybody, uh, you know, you're my first guest. I've done many interviews in the past and all different subjects, but not so much for this side of things. Um, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your background. All right. Well, um, mom, mom of four, happily married now for 11 years, and um, I'm an Army veteran. So, that's, you know, a thing I always overlook, but people seem to care about. Uh, so, I was no, active did I duty know that Army. About you? Probably not. I don't talk about it. <laughs> so it's two, like it's like a part of the in my history that I just like like to black out. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that in a minute now that I know you're a veteran. Carry on. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm um, I'm a coach and working on a launch for a Q salon, the Q salon for just other mama entrepreneurs trying to make shit happen. So um, I love it. That's good. <laughs> That's going to be your buzzword, like oh, mom, mom, mom. I can't even say it, but it makes it happen. I know. That's going to be your slogan. <laughs> so tell makes me, shit happen, yeah. what um, what part of the service were you were you in? I was in the army. Oh, I like you even more now. Uh, Normally, when I speak to veterans over here, they're like, "Yeah, I was navy, I was marine, I was." I bet I have not met many people from the army. I'm army myself. Uh, I'm also a veteran. Okay. So now we've got two veterans now chatting away about marketing and uh, all many other things. So that's quite a bit of a change, isn't it, Nicolette? I mean, you've kind of gone from the military. You're, you're a, a, a young mom, mom of four. Now yeah. you're an entrepreneur and you're yeah. coaching other people how to do it. What gave yeah. you the passion to do what you're doing now? You know... It started uh, a while back. My husband and I went to a real estate workshop um, where the whole concept of owning real estate entered my purview, so to speak. And so we actually started investing in real estate and uh, real estate I find is easy and I loved it. And I thought I want more. Um, then I had a, a situation where my husband broke his ankle. He Oof. went on a <laughs> he did a scooter ride with my, my son. We had just gotten a scooter and Aiden was like, daddy, daddy comes, you know, I want you to go scoot with me. And it wasn't even five minutes later and he had broken his ankle. He fell off, <laughs> hit a pothole in the wall, fell off and broke his ankle. So long story short, a few days later, he's laid up in bed. He's got his ankle all wrapped up. And, and I just thought, you know, I really wish I could bring in some extra revenue to help him out because at this point, you know, we had our real estate, but that's kind of, we, we didn't try to uh, mingle that into our personal finances. And he was the breadwinner. He was yeah. the single source of income for the home. And I thought, man, I wish I could do something. And so um, a few months later, I actually uh, started a photo booth company. So started a local photo booth company here in San Antonio. And so that was like really my first ownership of my own business. And, um, and now I just, I, I, I found so much liberation and it's just such a, an incredible journey to take ownership and, and to be an entrepreneur and, and kind of go down that path. So, um, I'm just kind of obsessed with it. I love it. I love it. And I have to say, you know, you, uh, we'll talk about it in a minute, but you actually introduced me to an amazing book that we've got to give a shout out to Evan Carmichael, because mm. I remember when we were in that business group and you, you're going to, you're going to show the book. Here we go. <laughs> I've got it in audible. 
<laughs> out of my out of my library. And by the way, just if anybody's listening, what she actually really meant to say on the story, there you go, your one word, and that is highly, highly recommend. Oh, you've got the hard version. Yeah. Yeah, I got the audible version because I like to listen to them when I'm driving. But I was just tell, telling everybody, actually, Nicolette, that the story for your husband shouldn't have been that he was scooting. It was, it's supposed to be, I was out skydiving and I fell. <laughs> <laughs> I was hiking away up in the trails and I came off the side of the road. Well, look, you, yeah, my, my, son, five... <laughs> my son comes tell me, Mom, a, Dad broke his ankle. And I was like, they had literally been, it wasn't even five minutes. You know, like they just left. I was like, no. That's bullshit. <laughs> how, no. how long have you been doing the marketing thing? Because that's how we really met. Yes, yeah. So I got into online marketing in 2016, and um, I, I got my feet wet learning, you know, what online marketing was. What's this thing called attraction marketing? Really got into the attraction marketing side and mm. understanding branding and uh, building the the audience up, um, and so. That was my entrance into it. In 2017, I did take a step back. I lost a baby girl, and um, Sorry to hear her, that. yeah, losing losing my baby was um, really awful. <laughs> it was it was really awful. Actually, this is my painting to her. Wow. Um, I kept it. You know, I, I painted it so that I could just keep her. You know, a yeah. part of her with me. Um, and so. Yeah, so my, my little baby, um, I lost her and I lost me in the process. Right. Um, and so I kind of, I, I call 2017 the year I went black. Um, wow. But in 2018, I kind of, I, I picked myself up off of the floor, the literal floor. <laughs> and um, I, I just decided, you know, I, I wanted to start getting back into it. So I actually got a... Uh, worked at a marketing agency where I worked a lot with clients and helping them with their marketing. And as of this past year, I just decided I'm going to start stepping out on my own. So I've kind of had a back and forth journey. It's been interesting, but, um, and you're I quite a mean, I mean, you're, you're quite a, a mean video editor because I remember when I saw your first video, I watched it and I was like, there is no way this girl is an amateur if she's done this on her <laughs> own or you have gone and hired somebody out there because that mm -hmm. was like, that was damn good video editing. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's, that's my primary, uh, my, my, you know, kind of like my, my day job I'm working my way out of, but yeah, do a lot of video editing these days. And so, so, you know, kind of talking about video, anybody who, you know, they should go to your channel, actually, and we'll put a link below, uh, not only in the podcast, but on this video to go and check out that video and check out the channel. Um, but, you know, talking about video, you did something a lot of people really, really want to go. And I got to be very careful that I don't say this the wrong way, because I've already, you've already pulled me up on this. You did not <laughs> go to what I thought you went to. You went to Vid Summit this year, which is what a lot of marketers want to go and, and you know, kind of get involved. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about your foray into Vid Summit because that must have been quite an exciting step for you. Yeah, Vid Summit was uh, incredible. It was um, very fast, fa fast paced. <laughs> and it, um, there, were, there were so many people there. There were so many uh, incredible workshops, incredible different things that you could learn and, and they had everything from artificial intelligence uh virtual reality and the future of video um to you know how to work on your personal brand so it was a, a really had a depth of knowledge and and things to learn from so it was an incredible experience do you think enough of do you think enough of us know about the power of video at the moment or do you think it's it's not as as strong as it, it could possibly be for, for in terms of marketing for young businesses? I would think that if you've been online for any amount of time, then you've heard that video is the way to go. And um, people that have local businesses and haven't, haven't dabbled in the online space, um, they may not be aware of the power of video. However, I feel like uh, that population is probably dwindling. I hope that most entrepreneurs, most business owners are 
moving online because that is really the place to be. Um, and then those that are online, I, I'd be hard pressed to believe that anybody doesn't know that video is there and available to them. Do they know the power of it? Um, it, it that's really hard to say because level of awareness is a pretty personal thing. Um, but I think that the, the increase in awareness is becoming more exponential and, um, and video is definitely the fastest way to connect with an audience. And it's the fastest way to get your message out there, um, using platforms like YouTube where, you know, you're using a search engine, you can put your stuff out there for people to find you very powerful. Um, so I, I think that it is becoming, if it's not already a very big hot topic that more and more people are becoming aware of. Do you think it's, I mean, there's, there's a big argument at the moment within the marketing field that it's oversaturated already. Do you think that's a, a fair statement or, or not? Yes and no. Uh, yes, in the sense that a lot of marketers are using video. Um, but no, in the sense that the beauty of today's marketplace is that there, I don't personally believe in market saturation. I believe that... Mm -hmm everyone has their potential to stand out and make something unique. Uh, we are created by an incredible gifted God. Okay. And he is the ultimate artist. He's the ultimate, you know, like look at the world around you and all the creative elements and just at, from the smallest cell to the, you know, to the universe, it's just uh, mind blowing. And we have that within us. And so there's something very unique and special about you that only you have. And that's for anybody listening in this audience is they have something very special and unique about them. And so I don't truly believe in saturation. I think that there is a saturation of people trying to copy each other okay. and that, that causes, that. that causes dilution in the marketplace because they're not tapping into their unique self. They're mm. not tapping into how to truly uh, and authentically connect with people. And um, I think authenticity is really interesting. Maybe we can explore that. But uh, for the most part, the, the people that are trying to get exposure and trying to get traction, when they just copy what other marketers are doing that are successful, but they're not bringing their own authentic flair or voice to it, that's saturated. I would agree you know, that's, that's it's saturated. interesting you say that because to be authentic is one of my big things as well. And I, I, I always say to people, you know, don't be a sheep. You know, don't be doing what everybody else is doing because everybody's voice has their own audience. I've said this to my wife. My wife and I have spoke about this many times. I've said, you know, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. What matters is what you're given in, in terms mm -hmm. of service to people and how you feel about it and how you're being authentic mm. and not just taking the, 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 the recipe from someone else and just trying to utilize that recipe to, to mm -hmm. increase your authority. It just doesn't work. I think if you're not unique, you're not going to get anywhere with it because it's, there's so many people doing the same thing all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that's, and, and I think, you know, from, you and I probably watch some of the same people in the same, I, want, I don't want to say YouTube gurus, but you know, we've got people like Evan Carmichael that we look at. We've got Roberto Blake, we've got Jasmine Starr. Every single one of the things that I notice about all these, these people is that every single one of them are uniquely authentic in their own way with their mm -hmm. own voice. They, every one of them yeah. are different. They've all brought something to the table. Yeah. So what makes you, what makes your, what makes you, more unique and authentic to your audience do you think what is it you've tried to play out there to let people know hey this is me i'm nicolette and i'm i am nicolette more and no, nothing different mm. well i'll say this that i too have struggled with how do i share my voice in the sea of so many other voices and um you know i i've for example, with online marketing, I know a lot about it. I mm -hmm. know about branding. I mm -hmm. understand social media strategy. Um, I've coached and consulted on this, but I don't 
and I've tried teaching about it too, but Mm -hmm. like putting a YouTube video together, for example, but I don't feel good about that. Um, I, I'm more interested in changing lives and I know that branding and learning how to market can transform somebody's life, right? Knowing how to do these things is an effective way to grow a business, get revenue so you can get out of whatever spot you're in to grow, you know, to grow a legacy for your family. Um, so that is important. However, I care far greater about the health and well-being of somebody's mind. And so um, one, of, one of my things is I'm very interested in helping other mamas. Um, a common thread, a common denominator that I see and I hear consistently between moms is the stress and anxiety, the uh, overwhelm, the loneliness and the frustration of being a mom. And it's something that moms live in guilt about because you don't want to feel that way. You're raising your children that you love, you know, but it exists. And then coupling that with trying to grow a business because many, many moms want to have a business. So whether they're dabbling with network marketing or they're actually trying to, you know, do an Etsy store or whatever, um, they want to have something for themselves. And I, I think that that's commendable and that's something that uh, you, you should think, be free to do. Do you think there's a great sense of failure for a mother? I mean, that's a bit strange to say because there you have a, you know, a mom like yourself who has four children, great children, you're looking after them. But you, you said something there that kind of really struck a nerve in me that they can feel really lonely. So I guess yeah. in that loneliness, I mean, it's, it's like that old saying, you can be the loneliest person at the party. Do you think that's a bit, you, and do you think there's a sense of failure with them and that mindset then kind of sets in with these people and they don't feel they can achieve what it is they, they dream about? I think that's very, very spot on. Um, I hate the word failure. I am, I'm, I'm very anti-failure. I don't believe in failure. I just believe in learning. And so, um, but, but that is something that, that is a real um, feeling, a real fear and a, a real, you know, situation that moms find themselves as they feel like they, they might want to try, but they fail to make the success that they it's, want. It's, it's hard not to say yeah. that word, actually. <laughs> I hate, I, I, I don't like failure. <laughs> um, I just don't believe in it. But, um, but the, the, the reality is being a mom and being an entrepreneur is very challenging. Uh, you have a lot to, to juggle and it can be slow going. And the loneliness is definitely a problem because generally speaking, most people are not surrounded by other entrepreneurs, right? <laughs> I mean, most moms are just surrounded by their kids all day and their laundry and, and dishes and, and everything else and screaming kids and no, <laughs> no, and no sleep and goodness knows. Right. So do you think, you know, when you decided to do, here's the other thing that, that, that I want to ask you about that. Cause it's, it's quite interesting. Do you think obviously then there's a massive, I don't want to use the word, failure but there's missed i like to use i actually like to use the term missed opportunities for growth um but the, there's a lack of support there's a lack of support there for moms who really want to strive out on their own because i've heard stories where, where and, and i've got you know a colleague of mine that works in our holistic uh, holistic therapies uh, uh, marketing suite and uh, nicole who's a, a phenomenal mother she's a single mother and she she trains other mothers but I think, you know, from a lot of the examples that I've heard and I've seen is that the biggest failure, you know, failure they like is that they don't have that support network, even though they might have people there. I mean, you, you go and tell someone you've got an idea that you want to have your own business and where is it? You know, some people just laugh at you in the face. Do you think that's a big factor? Uh, if you're talking about offline, then yes, I think that most people, and this, this goes back to a cultural situation, uh, a cultural problem, in my opinion, that we are still culturally in the mindset that uh, we were 100 years ago. You know, you raise your children to go to school to be employees. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Rockefeller in the early 1900s said, we need a country of workers not a country of thinkers. And so you have to think about the cultural implications of that and how it's just affected generations. 
and we're, we're living in the aftermath of that today, even with the technological revolution that we have where there's literally nothing we can't do at this point. You know, there's so much uh, abundance ahead of us, but support system wise, you know, a, a mama that might be talking to her mom or her sisters or her friends who are all raised in this situation where they think the way to go is be an employee, work an hour, get paid an hour. They don't understand. There's not a, a, a strong understanding of the entrepreneurial drive that, you know, a mama can have. And yeah, so it can cause a lot of missed opportunities because we do need, crave and desire support. Absolutely. I mean, we all need support and it, it doesn't matter whether you're male, female, whether you are in a, a dead end job or whether whatever it is you're trying to achieve in your life without mm -hmm. the support, you don't feel as if you can actually take that step forward. Yeah. You know, and I think that's a big problem, but you know, you're focused on uh, mothers who may be new mothers or mothers who want to set up their own, have their own dream, set up their own business. But equally, your knowledge and your wisdom that you give in coaching these people is not, I mean, it's equally via, you know, it's applicable to anybody really mm -hmm. to set yeah. up their own mm -hmm. business. Yeah, why did sure. you just, why did you choose to just concentrate with um, young moms? Because you so, knew the story? I mean, I've been there. I've been at the darkest yes. place of my life, you know, and I, and so it, it goes, it goes deeper than the mom, to be honest. Um, you know, a, a, the family unit is what makes up society. Um, and, and so, yes, there are going to be people that are single and stay single their whole lives. God bless them. You know, they have, they have that for them, but most part, we want to have a family unit. Now, when mama is happy, they say, what, what's the, the phrase? Um, happy wife, happy life. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I agree <laughs> with that 100%. I go, any man that's listening to this, the many people, yes, we agree. Happy wife, yeah. happy life. I just say yes. But, here, but here's the thing. Here's the thing though, Jacques, is that mama needs to know that there's more than what she's experiencing. There's so much in the loneliness of motherhood that, you know, in, in the dar darkest days, it can be hard to see that there's more to life. And mm -hmm. I just know that um, awareness requires effort and awareness also requires somebody to speak into and your there's, life. There's you my know? one word, guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, I, I, my one word is inspire, right? I have Absolutely. been inspired by people that have gotten out of their shit and have moved beyond it and made something great with their lives. And so that's what I want to inspire other people to do. And I think it's so important for mamas to do that because when a mama can take ownership of her life, her emotions, the situations that she perceives is either holding her back or propelling her forward that affects her marriage, that affects her children. And then her children are really so heavily influenced by the happy mama or the pissed off, angry, depressed, frustrated mama who yells at them and screams or punishes or just neglects. And what does that do for those kids? They grow up all dysfunctional, all jacked up, and mm -hmm. then they take that on to their families in the future. And so I feel like a lot, you know, it's just a huge mission and mamas need support. Mamas need help. And I just want to be on that bandwagon to be able to speak life into other mamas that are trying to do great things in the world. Do you know, that's brilliant because one, one of the, one of the things that you're mentioning there is about how, how the, 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 the mother is affected in her own life and how it affects the marriage and how it affects everything there's an element, do you think then there's, there's an element of when that mother or before she becomes a mother, even before you became a mother and you had this entrepreneurial spirit, you have ideas, you have goals, you have things that you want to achieve, you know, you, you, you maybe want to have your own dress line or whatever, but then you get pregnant, along comes mm. the children and you feel that your goals have just gone because you think your life's totally changed. Do you think that's a fair assumption? I mean, you're, you're an inspiration that you can 
really light those mothers up to say, hey, I've been there and you can you can actually do whatever you want, even though you've got a kid. Mm. I think um, I think there's a lot of possessiveness around being a mom and many, many girls are brought up in the Disney world, right? Where we're looking for our Prince Charming to come and rescue us from the. There's a few of us around. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, you get into motherhood and whether you're entrepreneurial driven or not, honestly, you start having kids and that just becomes your identity and it becomes your world. And you, you know, humans just in general, we worry about judgment, about outside perspective. And how do I look as a mom? Am I doing things right? Am I, you know, when somebody sees me or they, what are they going to say about my kids? You know, everything from education to what you're feeding them to what they're dressed in, you know, it's, it's, it's insane how intense these, these feelings are about the mama's identity wrapped up in the kids. How did you feel? So, how did how did you actually feel? Because I guess that you had this burning drive or this burning ambition to be your own boss, even you know before you had your your children. But how did you feel? You you I mean, you got four kids. I mean, I can't even imagine it to be honest. You got four <laughs> children. How do you how do you equate that with that drive and that ambition that you had? Did you ever think there was a point where you would never do it? Never have a business or be yeah. An entrepreneur? Never have a business. Never be an entrepreneur because you have that drive in your mind that you want to try and achieve. But you, I mean, you got four kids. I mean, you got four kids that you're dealing with. Did you ever think that that dream was never going to happen? So when I was pregnant with my first son, I was um, coming to the end of my first four-year term in the army. And um, they give you the option to get out or not. I chose to stay in because I kind of didn't know, like, could we afford to not be in the military? You know, like, could I, could I make our bills and all these things, you know? Um, ultimately, I did, I did depart. But, um, but the idea of moving from the army into having a business, for example, it wasn't like a drive for me at that time. I just thought I just want to be a mommy. And I think most people, most moms with their first kid probably have that very strong, intense desire to just be a mom to that baby. Um, but as my kids grew up, as I, you know, kept popping them out and, (laughs) and they grew up, and I was dealing with my own emotional issues, a lot of dark days. I had postpartum depression. Wow. Um, after my second son, I was just, um, I wasn't quite as bad as after losing Libby, but after, after my second son, I was, I was very emotionally unstable. I was depressed. I was dark. And I, I kept thinking about my mom, uh, growing up my mom, I'm the fourth child of seven. And my mom wow. was always, always angry. She was just so angry. And that's, that's like the word that I just cling to. When I think about my mom, I just think right. about angry. And she was angry because she was alone. And she was angry because she had a house full of kids. They stressed her out. And she didn't oh. really have an outlet. You know, she just, she just had this like pent up rage. And my dad would come home. And it was like every night my dad would come home. They would go to their bedroom. And she would just yell at him about the kids. And, you know, that, that really started to, to set in with me after uh, having my third child or while I was pregnant with my third boy, I was thinking, you know, I, I talked to my husband and I said, you know, I don't want to be angry like that. And I could feel it. Like I had so much emotional baggage and I was just, I was mm. angry and it scared me uh, to be honest. And so um, I, I'm like, I don't know if it's the beer getting to me or I think I'm running a tangent here. I'm kind of think I'm going off track. No, not at all. <laughs> Honestly, not at all. No, I, I think, you know, what you're saying is very valid. Here, here's the thing that I get from it. You know, you've had all this experience as a mother. You've had all this experience in, in I mean, before we even get to the marketing, you have felt the darkest nights of the soul. You have been lost, even you've been, you know, you've been the loneliest person in the room when the party's going on. 
I think you've mm -hmm. got something valid that you're bringing here to people to the table. I mean, you're an example. You exemplify someone who's, I mean, most mothers have got one or two children, okay? And most mothers have, you know, some of them have an idea they want to go out and, you know, they want to be successful in life and whichever way that they measure that success. But I think you're exemplifying the whole thing as, as you know, before you even get to your marketing side of things, you've experienced everything. I think that's what makes a coach and that's what makes someone as a business coach, a mindset coach, whatever it is, is that there's very real experience. You know, I, I've mm. said many things before. I've seen coaches out there that will coach you to write a book and they've never written a book or they'll coach you to mm. run a business and they've never run a business. So I think your experience speaks volumes. Mm. And where did you, you know, at the end of the day, where did you then get this, you know, when, when you, you had your children, you've, you've, what's the point where you left the army and you went out in the big wide world? That must have been a massive, massive leap and terrifying. I mean, I know how I felt when I left the army. Oh, when I left the military, um, it wasn't too bad because, you know, my husband had a, had a job and we were settling in together and it was kind of exciting to just be a mom. Um, at that time, that's, that's really all I wanted was just to, sorry, that's really all I wanted was just to be a mom and just to be at home with my son. I was completely head over heels in love with my first son and all, all of them. But it was like that first time motherhood, that first baby in your arms and just, Oh, the, the intoxicating chemicals. You're terrified in case you brain. drop them. And then, and now, you know, years later, you've got three in your arm and you're not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that child went to the ER more than, <laughs> more than, well, more than probably, you know, every time was just unnecessary, but I, I was so nervous about how I was, you know, tending to him and I wanted him to stay, you know, healthy and, and good. And, um, and now, you know, my new baby my little 17 month old he's been sick for like two weeks and he's good he's good i'm not worried about it you're not worried but about you, it We're, yeah you, you <laughs> whereas learn, before you know? with your first kid you've been going nuts so you know let, yeah. let's kind of spring forward a little bit because you've, you've had all this experience and you know you you're out the, the military you're being a mother you've had the you know you've, you've lost you've lost a loved one as well and um and that's a terrible thing to do but you've gone into marketing. What what drove you into that side? I mean, were, you weren't in marketing in the military. You're you're juggling with all your children, you know, your children and everything else. What took you into the marketing side? Well, to be honest, I um, whenever I got into the when I started my photo booth business, um, I was exposed to network marketing and. If you know anything about network marketing in the online space now, they're um, heavy, You went heavy to pushers. all those dead end meetings, didn't you? Where they'd have coffee well, and wine and cheese and talk and I, promise that they're going to hire you. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I did all the all the things. I did all the things. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, one of the at one of my networking events, I met a woman who you know. Um, well, I'm sorry. Back up. Because I got into network marketing, following networking from the photo booth business, trying to promote the business, um, you know, then I got into this online space and opted into something somewhere at some point. And this girl calls me and calls me and calls me again. And I kept ignoring her phone call. Finally, I answer and I wanted to tear her new one and be like, you know, would you just stop calling me? Like, I don't want to talk to you. Um, but she won me over actually. She was, she was a good closer and um, she got, she introduced me into this online marketing space and pitched it like, Hey, you know, you can build a business online for your network marketing side of things. Um, I was fascinated with it. I never actually grew the network marketing business. I wasn't ever very interested in it to be honest. Um, but I, I was just fascinated with the concept of attraction marketing. And so I just kind of went gung-ho at that time learning everything I could about marketing and the different social strategies and you know everything that it takes to market effectively online and meanwhile you've still you're, you're still rearing your children as well bringing up your children and yeah dealing with a home life and a family life and still doing all that and that's I mean that's a couple of businesses you had the real estate and then the photo mm -hmm. booth business and mm -hmm. uh 
and now you're you're kind of out on your own. Tell us a little bit about because I you know I run an agency, I run a marketing agency, and I know what it's like to deal with clients. There's certain things I'm yeah. like, oh my god, I want to strangle my client because they don't. <laughs> um, you've been there. So how yeah. long did you work at the marketing agency? Agency. <clears throat> I worked there for almost an entire year in, between 2018 and the beginning of this year. I'm sorry, 2019 and the beginning of the, wait, what year are we? 2018 and the beginning of this year. <laughs> oh, that beer's really color. getting it's to me. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't really drink that often. So, um, and so yeah, almost a full year. I ultimately left because I did not like the dynamics of the founder of the company. I found he was ethically not the kind of person right. I wanted to work with. And so, um, I could have, I could still be there and doing just fine. Um, but I just chose to walk away cause I didn't, my standards and his standards were very unaligned. See and there, you're bringing that thing that back, ethic, ethics and authenticity Yeah. in serving other people. And so yeah. when did you make the decision, right? That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump on my own now. This is it. Yes. I'm getting into the big wide world. Nicolette, here I am. I'm coming. Well, honestly, whenever the CEO asked me to take on more responsibility and be more involved in the company, I, I just told him I wasn't interested. I couldn't see myself continuing to work there. He, he had a very awful approach with his clients. He, and this is why I'm, I'm a big proponent. Any of your listeners out there, um, you know, that may be hyper-focused on numbers, subscribers, view counts, um, you know, followers, those kind of metrics, these numbers that we see displayed, they can so easily be manipulated. And in this agency I worked with, he had, he wasn't lying. His pitch was to his clients how many leads he could get for their business in such amount of time. He didn't lie about that. However, the leads were awful. They weren't qualified. He was doing no exploration in his marketing. He had one kind of ad and one only, and it was just attracting the worst of the worst. So yes, his clients did get more leads than they could handle, but it doesn't mean anything. Right. No. And I couldn't, I, and I tried to talk to him about it and I tried to work with him and try to get him to see how he's hurting his clients. You know, he's taking all this money from them and he's not actually fulfilling. He's not actually helping them grow their business. He's just getting them leads and leads don't mean anything at all. If you can't make revenue, if you can't actually close sales and have you know, people to work with. I'm a, so I'm a big proponent like yourself. I'm a big proponent of relationships and trust. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether you've got a thousand leads or a hundred leads. The leads mean yeah. nothing if you can't actually keep them or you can't close, they're not even close. I don't even really like the word close, but you can't service them and you can't give them, you can't, yeah. you know, respond to what their needs are. I think that's the big thing in marketing yeah. in today's Today's day and age, it's all about how many leads you can get. And half of those leads are not even, they're, they're cold, you know, they're, they're, they're useless. You know, whereas yeah. I like to, as I've said, and I think I've spoke to you about this before, you have a thousand followers and you can have people, if you've got nobody engaging and nobody building trust for you, it's the same with lawyers, you know, if you don't trust them. How many people actually trust lawyers? Not a lot. And I know for any of your lawyers that, that, that I'm connected with that are listening in, I don't mean it about you guys. Um, but, you know, we don't trust lawyers. And there's a whole big thing about lawyers trying to, to, to get out there and get trust. I think it's in any business, trust mm -hmm. and building relationship is, is fundamental. And I think this is where YouTube can come in because you can't essentially hide behind it, really, can you? Mm. If you're out there. Well, I would say that it is quite possible to put on a display of something that's not real. Mm -hmm. And you see it on Instagram, you see it on Facebook, and you can see it on YouTube as well. So if somebody has a good stage behind them, somebody has the right makeup, the right clothes, um, and then there are unfortunately 
lots of different ways that you can pay for subscribers or pay for views or, you know, there, there are these ways to get social proof Mm -hmm. outside of just organic growth and, and even outside of running ads, you know, there are other ways that you can go about getting this following or, or some type of social proof. And so I, I think YouTube does afford a level of intimacy that other channels don't, but um, Vid Summit is a great example of I've seen some people online and then I saw them at Vid Summit. And I can tell you that there were some people that did not strike me as aligned with the brands that they're putting out there versus others that are like just as real and sweet and awesome and helpful offline as they show themselves to be online. And so I think that it's uh, wow, that's it's a, a big fine wake line. Up call. Yeah, that's a big yeah, wake I up think, call. Yeah, I, I've often one I've often wondered that when I see a lot of these people on YouTube, whether they're really as authentic as they really are when you meet them face to face. You know, and and I mean, not pointing any names or anything, but I think some people when they get so many followers, if you like, or they have, you know, the vanity metrics are up there. Um, you know, this is the thing I like about Gary V. You know, he, there's nothing false about him. I mean, he's real. He doesn't hold back. He's, mm. you know, he, people either love him or hate him, but there's an authenticity there, I think, with him. Whereas I can see how there'd be people that would be different on camera and then off camera. But, I, but here's the thing. Now, while I agree with you, I agree with you to a certain extent in regards to, you know, Instagram and everything else, I don't think the life, I mean, this is just my personal opinion, I don't think the life on YouTube for you hiding behind that persona, it, it will constantly be there. I don't think people can, they can't keep it up forever. They're going to show their, they're going to show their, their real self at some point. Maybe. You don't agree with that? Well, I think it it just depends. Now, a caveat to what I just shared, and this is something I have to remind myself uh, just as much as anyone else needs to remember, is at those kind of events, there can be a tendency towards fanfare where, Mm -hmm. you know, people who are not quote unquote influencers or as um, exposed with their messaging as others, they can kind of like gush over the people on stage and over the influencers that show up. And here's something uh, uh, that I think is very striking, very profound. Um, Where it originates from, I don't know, but I think it's, it's something that all of us could take to heart is the moment that you put somebody on a pedestal, you're giving them the permission to look down on you. Now, well, that's very, yeah, that's good. I like that. Yeah. We all put on our pants one leg at a time. We all have to shower and put on deodorant, right? Like we are all human just making the best of our lives as we can. Some of us are more skilled in one thing than another. Like I suck at math. Ask me a math equation. I can't do it. I don't want to. I like just forget about it. You know, I won't, I won't do that that because I suck at it as well. (laughs) Okay. But that doesn't make you less of a human being. Right. And it doesn't, it, it, all that means is that you're skilled in something else, but we, so in those environments, you know, I could, I could go off and talk about this for at length, but, um, in those environments, a lot of these influencers may just have their own issues dealing with how they are perceived and dealing with the people that are gushing over them and drooling over them and just like, Oh, talk to you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And it's like, I'm just a person, you know, and, and I'm sure that that creates inner diet, you know, inner conflict. And, and there's a whole slew of things that I could just be judging. So I, I do want to leave that as a caveat because it may be unfair for me to say that, you know, it's, no, it's I, my no, I think it's very poignant. I think you've, you, you've got a valid point there. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, nobody knows the individual's battle that's going on in their mind. It doesn't matter what, how they're perceived on the outside or, or how their right. persona is, but I think we don't know people's, we don't know the war they're fighting in their mind or in their heart. We, we don't know. But at the end right. of the day, we do have, 
I have a saying, and 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 that you know, I I've written for many magazines all over the world and stuff. And then one of the things, one of the things, in one of the articles that I wrote many years ago um, was an article called "All Blood Runs Red," mm, which is mm-hmm. really the basis of what you're saying. All blood runs red. It doesn't matter who you yeah. are, how big you are, or what you're doing. Your blood is the same as anybody else's. Again, okay, maybe not rhesus negative and God knows what else, but what I mean is that's we're all, you know, we all have a humanistic side to us. We all err and we all, you know, make our mistakes and learn from them. Some of us do, some of us don't. Um, but I do think there's a lot of pedestal putting, you know, there's a lot of people in, in, in the marketing world that are putting a pedestal. At the end of the day, they don't, they don't know. Uh, I don't think that you, they teach you anything you don't really know. You know, at the end of the day, and I think we spoke about this, is you've gone there to Vid Summit, or as I was calling mm-hmm. it, VidCon, but we won't say that, Vid Summit, and a lot of the stuff you already knew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you th- and probably most of the people that were there, I would suspect, probably knew it. But they were going there because of that pedestal. Mm, yeah, baby, for sure. There were people I was excited to see and yeah. And and, uh, yeah. Um, I I do also have to say though, that in situations like that, where you think, you know, right. A good deal of information about a particular topic, there's always something to learn. And as humans, you know, we do need constant reinforcement. There are concepts and lessons that I have learned repeatedly over my life that I will probably continue to have to learn over and over again, because that's just the nature of the beast, you know? And so, um, go into an event like Vid Summit or any other live event that has some type of, you know, education base or, or workshop vibe or something where you can grow as a entrepreneur or just as a human being, there's always value that can be found let me ask you this is going to this is a bit of a double a double barreled kind of question really but do you think you know did you go there for you or did you go there for the the moms that you're you're coaching uh both because one of my personal struggles coming out and stepping out on my own and just finally saying okay let me expose this mama to the world and see what happens. (laughs) Um, You know, it's so important to understand your message and to know how to articulate a message. And it's a weakness of mine. And I'll be the first to admit trying to summarize what I, what I stand for and what I'm trying to do has left me struggling. And so I had started my YouTube channel, for example, uh, towards the beginning of this year. And pretty much all of my videos are around mindset, but I was like, how do I talk about mindset and how do I talk about entrepreneurship and how do I do this? And how, you know, how do I do it in a way that's impactful and meaningful and brings value? And so honestly I pulled back because I really wanted to get my head straight. You know, I don't, I don't believe in creating content for the sake of creating content. I do not believe that I'm, I'm the same actually making garbage just to make it does any, I I think it's okay to do it privately, but to throw it out there, just, you know, I don't, I I think it's nonsense. Just to get your numbers up. Yeah. I think it's nonsense. Um, but that's, you know, that's me. So, um, so yeah, so I took a step back. So I went to vid summit in hopes that it would help me to further clarify the best value that I could bring to an audience. And, um, and I I think it was well worth it. Yeah, I, I, for sure see uh it, it was definitely beneficial to my growth to my understanding to just deepening some of the knowledge base that i already had yeah do you think it's changed your direction in any way in your entrepreneurial journey or your marketing prowess i don't think it's changed my direction um although i would have to say that um kind of our our pre pre podcast call when we yeah. talked about virtual reality. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah. really, it's really got me excited about virtual reality. So what is the potential with virtual reality, especially in the field of coaching, you know, mental health and helping people get out of the boxes that they create for themselves is so important. 
And it's not only important for the person, but it's important for society, you know, and the generations to come. And um, so it's something that I'm super interested in. Like, how can we interweave virtual reality with coaching? You know what? And these- Te- go and tell some of the listeners about this because we did have, and I feel like I'd be stealing it for myself, but we did have a little bit of a chat about this and it is fairly unique and it's amazing what we were talking about. So tell the listeners exactly what this means in terms of the impact in marketing and to the individual entrepreneur or even the person who's being coached. Yeah. So one of the talks I went to, I I forget the the guy's name and I can give it to you afterwards so you can put it in show notes or whatever you want. Um, But he called himself a futurist and he was talking about virtual reality and kind of how they're using it today. And so Google just recently went to the castle at Versailles in France. Versailles is one of the uh, biggest tourist destinations in the world. And so people flock there year round to go see it. And I'm not, you know, I I don't know if your audience is very familiar with Versailles, but beautiful castle, um, lots of history there. Well, in order to try to minimize the amount of people and the demand to see Versailles, Google has actually gone in and mapped out the entire castle in virtual reality. So now they're, they're trying to make it accessible. So anybody anywhere in the world at any point can say, I want to go see Versailles and they can go. Now there's also the technology that they're, they're uh, tinkering with at the moment. They showed an example of a concert for the band kiss and say that, you know, down the street, there's a concert happening and you want to attend, but you don't want to pay for, junk seats. Well, you could pay, you know, a a particular price to be on stage with KISS. Um, And so they actually showed, you know, the the virtual reality experience where you're standing right next to, I I don't know the guy's name, I'm not, (laughs) but uh, standing right next to the singer, right? And as he's like sticking his tongue out and he's sweating on you and you know, you're just in immersed in this environment and it's not computer graphics. It's the real deal. It's the person. So, you know, doing a virtual reality live stream. And so it's like uh, that I, Star you know, Trek shared, thing, isn't it? It's like that hologram Star Trek, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But they can't see you. <laughs> you can see them, which is slightly, you know, uh, whatever it is, what it is. Um, it's the way it's going. Now, what a I new way of influencer yeah, marketing. I found, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought what's interesting is the idea of uh, coaching at the moment. Many of us coach virtually. So like what Jock and I are doing at this moment, we're Zooming so we can see each other digitally, but uh, he's in the boonies and I'm in San Antonio. You know, like we're, we're far apart, but we're still able to meet, which is a huge technological Massive. advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we don't have to worry about local businesses. You know, I don't have to go to networking events to get clients. So that's incredible. Um, now imagine taking that a step further and having a virtual reality space where you can take on a client and have your own sitting room where you can have coffee, you know, a virtual reality coffee meetup and coach somebody right there in a safe space that creates boundaries that are far beyond what you can create in your own house, you know, where, where you can really be present with your client and your client can really be present with you. And I just, that truly excites me at the kind of impact that that can have in lives. And so that's just something that uh, got me real. No, did they give, did, you know, did they, did they give an ETA on this? I mean, are they saying it's within the next year, the next five years? Well, from, and I, to be fair, I haven't done a whole lot of uh, follow up about the Google thing, but it seems like Versailles is ready to go. Um, As far as deployment, I don't know where it's at, but it's completely mapped at this point. Um, I think within the next few years, you'll start seeing virtual reality rolling out these different platforms where you can, as long as you got the equipment, you can show up at that concert and be on stage with your favorite band. You know, if you don't want to leave your house, you can do it virtually. It's amazing. You know, I, I think it will take education as well to another dynamic. So I think when people are teaching or yeah. coaching, or yeah. it's going to take it to a completely new level. 
Um, but it, there's also, I mean, obviously Google's going to capitalize on it as Google's thing. It might end up being something in YouTube that you have to have a, a separate, I don't know, subscription for as everything seems to be going that way. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, it, it's exciting to see how they're developing this. I mean, I think at some point, I don't know if we actually spoke about this, but I think at some point, most people nowadays are not reading, even now in my, my marketing side of things, there's only so many articles you can write, but mm. people are consuming audio and visual representation. They're, they're consuming it in big, big mm. amounts. And I think there's going to come a time where few people will probably read documents and things online. It's all going to be audio and visual. Mm. And I think it's just jumping in now. Do you think that's going to change your perspective on your business? I think I love that because I hate writing blogs. <laughs> If I'm going to be completely honest, I, I don't, I don't like to read things online either. You know, I, I much prefer watching or listening. I um, got to be careful what I say about writing because I, I write books and I've written books. So I'm just going to, I, I now, love writing. I'm going to say. I, I love physical. That's why I get physical. I, I can, I can read a book all day. I love it. It's just something about reading on a screen. I do not dig. It's just, what about the yeah, audible yeah. side of things? You you listen to audible stuff much? Yeah, I listen to I listen to a lot of audibles, listen to podcasts, listen to uh, you know different trainings, any courses. You know, I've bought a bazillion courses over the years, so a lot of them have the audio, or uh, at least you can download the audio to it. So I've got a large audio file uh, library on my cell phone and on my computer. So I list, I'm constantly listening or reading something physical. Have you, um, you, no, you mentioned, I'm going to jump back because you said that you, you bought a plethora of courses. Do you yes. regret any of them? Mm -hmm. Do I regret any of them? Um, no, I don't. Because if I hadn't bought the courses, I wouldn't be where I am today. Um, and for, for multiple reasons, right? So again, I don't believe in failure. I, I uh, have a hard time believing in mistakes too. <laughs> um, I, I, I truly believe everything that you do see experience. Um, it's all learning experiences, you know, if you can look at it that way. And so, no, I don't have any regrets. There have been junk courses I've bought that I may not necessarily recommend other people buy, but I don't regret that I've bought them. It's taught me something. You bought them on ClickBank, didn't you? The twenty-seven dollars, and then the upsells at forty-seven dollars, and then ninety-seven dollars. <laughs> I have spent stupid money with ClickBank, and I don't want to drop. I don't. I don't like name dropping, but yeah, I've done that, and that was um, a lesson learned. <laughs> you know what? And here's here's the thing. I think that's a very important. It's a very important lesson because. One of the things I'll say if I'm coaching anybody is that I can cut down your time to success because you won't make the same mistakes mm. and we don't like mm -hmm. them. You're not going to make the same choices that we did taking you mm. down that path. So you're going to get to, for instance, I can, you know, a, a gentleman that, that I work with just now, he, he had a business coach for a very, very long time. It, it mm -hmm. didn't get him anywhere. So and yeah. just by working with me and identifying don't do that because this is how it's going to turn out if you do try and think about it a different way you want to cut that time to success because you've already you've already been there done that bought the t-shirt spent the money wasted yeah. the money <laughs> realized yeah. that it, it, it's not a shiny gold syndrome that you can there's no such thing by the way whoever wrote i can't remember who wrote it but there's no such thing as a four-hour work week just let me tell you that guys uh, you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. there's no four-hour work weeks yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot to learn. I think that, um, if you're coachable and if you truly trust somebody who's guiding you and giving you certain feedback, then yeah, you can have that, that shortcut, so to speak. Um, because there are a lot of, a, a lot of junk courses out there and there are a lot of, uh, bad fits. Let me say that, mm. you know, um, I, I spent, close to, I've probably spent over $30,000 on getting coached myself. And I'll tell you this, 
Um, coaching is a very sensitive thing in my opinion. I think that not every coach, um, not every coach client relationship makes sense. And if you're looking for somebody to be coached by, I'd really recommend you have a list of specific criteria that you're hoping to accomplish. And hopefully you're matched up with a coach that has the, the, um, knowledge, the expertise, and the wisdom to see if you guys would work together and make sense. Because I've worked with coaches who just worked with me because I was paying them. They did not work with me to help me grow in the areas that I truly needed to grow, but they didn't have the wisdom to see what I really needed. And so that's why I say that there's like, they might not necessarily be bad coaches. I don't want to say that they're bad coaches, but what I do see is there was a a misalignment because I needed something that they couldn't provide me, but they didn't have the the wisdom to see that. And they just took my money. Right. Instead of being a coach and helping. You you say wisdom, Nicolette, and I say intuition. Yeah. Because I think that, and and there's, there's a bit of a parallel to both, I think, because I think a, a coach should be intuitive intuitive enough to be able to identify maybe some of the weaknesses or some of the um, intuitively seeing what the person can't see themselves and being able to guide them in the right direction, not tell them what to do, but to guide them through utilizing their intuition. And you're right. I have seen, coaches that it, it's really all about the money and it's, it's just about mm-hmm. the money and, and it's yeah. not about the person, the individual. And I've always, I've always kind of said service first, the, the benefits and everything will come later, you know? Right. That's right. And that's, that's ultimately what my problem was with the marketing agency I, I had been working with, you know, they, they just thought about money and the money they were making off their clients and not about, the transformation that their services could provide in the client's lives. And to me, that's distasteful. That's wrong. Um, especially when it's so apparent, mm. you know, it was like yeah. painfully apparent that that's just what they were doing. Um, but none of their clients, they couldn't really say anything because they were getting what they were promised, right? They were getting leads. Who's so, your ideal client? Who's your ideal client? My ideal client is going to be a mama who knows that there's something more for her outside of the home, but still loves her home and wants to create uh, a legacy for her family, a legacy for her children, um, but wants to just figure it all out, you know, and who she's got to be at the level of awareness to, to be aware that she could use some help. Um, I think there, there is a significant difference between somebody who is just so stuck in their own funk that they can't even see that they have control to get themselves out of it. You know, they have the power. Um, they're, they're probably not ready for me yet <laughs> to be honest. Uh, a but a, a mama, Watch out, Nicolette's coming. Yeah. <laughs> but a mama who's, who's, who's aware that there's some work that needs to be done. Um, and is willing to explore that and, and take some time to create a better future for her, her family, her household, and her business. That's my kind of lady. You, you want to become part of the story, don't you, really? Is essentially, when you look at it, you're being part of that. And what I mean by that is that you're becoming a part of their success story. You, you're kind of helping and guiding them and you can say yeah you know with that wisdom and that knowledge that i gave them look at them now i actually don't want it to be about me and and yeah to an extent the 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 biggest thrill that i i feel and i experience when i work with people is when i'm able to ask them questions they've never thought to ask themselves and when those questions open up a piece of them and a part of them that they didn't know was there, that a possibility it presents itself that was always there. They just didn't have the right question to uncover it. Those are my favorite moments. It gives me goosebumps. You're just finding thinking the, about the people greatness, that I've, the greatness that's hidden within yeah, them. 
pulling, pulling somebody's greatness out is thrilling. And so I actually, I have a difficult time saying something like, I want to be a part of somebody's success because I feel like that's very self-centered and that's Mm -hmm. not, that's not really my angle. My angle is more, how can I help bring a a mama into the, the, the understanding of all that she can be and all that she can create in this world while maintaining an amazing love affair with her husband and a healthy, wonderful home for her children. You know, how can I help to open that up to somebody? And see, it's not not just about business. It's not, it's It's never just about business. It's gotta be, it's gotta start here first. Yeah. You know, cause, because, it, business is kind of shit if you're shit, you know, like if your mindset is just garbage, it's not why, even you know, it, it's, it's not even, you're just adding to the burden, right? Because then you have all these, all these ideals of what your business should be. And you're, you, you can't even focus on yourself to grow yourself. And then you're trying to grow this business. And there's always going to be a dissonance that there's always going to be this feeling of anger and frustration and disappointment. And it's like, why, why do we do this to ourselves? We've got to work on ourselves. We've got to work on our hearts and our minds and, and our, our insides so that we can overcome these things. What's the three, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you right on the spot now. Okay. What's the three <laughs> basic tools you'd give to, you know, a, a mom who wants to explore exactly what you're talking about. Give them three tools. Three easy things they can do now to, to, to change or whatever. Okay. So the very first thing that I generally introduce to somebody is, uh, the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. No, nice. And yeah. Um, I find that it's easy to understand and that it is an aid a simple aid to help start to shift perspective. Um, another tool would be, um, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think because a lot of my stuff is just talking, you know, the, the coaching just one-on-one, um, the four agreements is definitely a big thing. And then I, I have got a lot of worksheets, (laughs) A lot of things that I can go through and, and, and work on, you know, just pulling out. Um, but I'm heavily into the one-on-one just talking and, and right. uh, I That's don't the believe that there's approach. a one size fit all, you know, it's, it's hard to just kind of say, well, these are the three I'm going to give to everybody because I don't think that that's. There's yeah, one thing I, that I, I give to everybody. That. There's one thing that I give to everybody, no matter what it is, is meditation. Hmm. Is, is, is almost like, it's almost like prayer basically. And that's one yeah. thing that I'll say that no matter who you are, what you are, what you want to achieve, what you want to do, I believe, or I perceive that a meditative aspect or a prayerful aspect is, is probably the most powerful tool that anybody can have. Mm, yeah. I think meditation is, um, is very powerful. However, I think for mamas and this, this is just from my perspective. (laughs) um, (laughs) Generally meditation is great. And I know a lot of mamas benefit from it. And I know any mama can benefit from it. Right. Um, But sometimes there's just, there's so much noise in the household. It's hard to, to still your mind. And now, um, I do not believe meditation is about emptying your mind and about stilling your mind, but sometimes women feel like they're doing it wrong. I hear that a lot. I don't think I can do it. I don't really know how to do it. I I don't think I'm doing it right. And it's like, well, it's not really about that. Um, So for anyone in your audience who may feel like that, I think the the best piece of advice I ever got about meditation was if you ever catch your mind straying during meditation, you got it. You won. That's it. You bring yourself back, go back. You're good. There, there's, it's, it goes, it all goes back to this, this ideal, this, this level of, oh, I'm not doing things good enough. And it's like, compared to what? Like you see something, you're aware of it. 
congratulate yourself and then get back to the task. That's all you have to do. That's brilliant. That's exactly what I say. Meditation is about awareness. If you have an aware, aware mind or you're aware that your mind is racing yeah. or struggling, then that's where you start. And I've yeah. always said to people that the, the secret of meditation is in the breath and between the breath and the out breath, that mm. time and space between there, because that, that's kind of what helps you. Now, I know that digresses a little bit from marketing, but you know, I think it all plays a role in your life, I think, because you can't really look at marketing and you can't really look at business unless you have your head, as you said, your head is in the right place. How did you get yours in the right place? Because you have, I mean, look at what you've gone through. Four kids, losing a child, running a business. You know, I mean, how did you get your head in the right place? You know, it's um, a daily effort. <laughs> I'll say that for <laughs> sure. She she still has work. As she reaches for that. the she beer. She still has work to do. <laughs> As she, she finished the beer. Um, so, you know, after I lost my baby, um, I, I had an opportunity to go to Europe with my husband. He had, um, he was being sent to Europe to do some site tours over there with his job. It was going to be, a, it was three weeks. And I had a girlfriend who, as soon as she heard that there was an opportunity for me, she knew the pain that I had been in after losing Libby. And she was like, I will watch your children for you. Go spend some time with your husband go be with him. It's going to be good for you. So I went and it was awful. <laughs> it was, I never it was expected. Worst. It was, I, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I never <laughs> expected that one little bit. I never expected that to come out of her mouth. <laughs> well, everyone thinks, Oh, you went to Europe with your husband. It must've been so romantic. It must've been wonderful. And it's like, no, it was awful. We fought the whole time. And the, the last weekend we went to Paris and it was like a dream of mine to go to Paris. My whole life, I grew up speaking French in Louisiana or that's what, you know, my, that was my second language of choice. And, wow. and I loved French and I just wanted to go to France and, you know, Paris was like a dream come true. So that was where we chose to spend our last weekend. I think we flew home the, the Monday or Tuesday or somewhere around there. Um, the Saturday night before the end of our trip, our, our whole trip had been just conflict after conflict and, and it was just arguments and, and frustration and a lot of yelling. And, um, that Saturday night we were going to the Eiffel tower and I don't know if you've ever been to Paris or not, if you've seen the Eiffel tower at night, but it, it has a light show. It's I bodyguarded in, I used to be a bodyguard. I, I went, I've okay. been there. They can't drive to save themselves. <laughs> I didn't know that the Eiffel Tower lit up that way, right? So yeah. that was that was news to me. And there's a bridge that leads up to the Eiffel Tower. And my husband and I were going to go and do a video call to our children and show them the Eiffel Tower and just be like, hey, I love you. But on our walk to the Eiffel Tower, we were fighting. Oh. I don't even know what we were fighting about, but it was it was like – as we got closer to the Eiffel Tower, the the you know the 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 noise just rose and rose, and and we just got more and more angry at each other. And by the time we got into that bridge, where there are tons of tourists and mm -hmm. all these people selling flowers and street food and this and that, you know, all over this bridge, that's where I stopped, and I just decided to completely just you know. I vomited everything awful that I could possibly say to my husband on this bridge. And it was a very public display. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure about this, but I would not be surprised if somebody caught it on film and it's floating around the internet somewhere. It was awful. There were people coming up trying to give me flowers and I was like <laughs> telling them to F off. I mean, I was just like the worst of the worst. So after this trip, I was ready to leave my husband. I was just done. I was done with my life. I was done with my marriage. I was done with everything. And um, I was really dark. I was, I was very, very depressed and sad and just confused. Um, I don't know what the thing was, right, that really changed things for me. But I, I somehow came across um, Mind Valley. And if your audience isn't familiar with Mind Valley, they should be. Uh, Mind Valley. Awesome! Is, I'm actually I'm going to be listening to one of the webinars next week. Actually, 
Yeah. Mind Valley um, has just got a, an incredible array of thought leaders yeah, who absolutely. their whole mission is to help mm -hmm. people think differently. Mm -hmm. And so I just got really immersed into Mind Valley, uh, started listening heavily to Marissa Peer, Lisa Nichols, and um, Vishen Lakiani, and just listening to new thoughts. And I, mm -hmm. I just allowed myself to entertain the thoughts. And over time, I started to apply the thoughts. And so it wasn't, you know, I, I, I could listen to something really uplifting, but then go and just curse my husband out in front of my kids and just feel totally justified, you know? Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but <laughs> poor guy. It really, <laughs> I know, my poor hubby. Um, it, it really was, I think, being introduced to the four agreements was huge for me. Um, and the four agreements, the, the one thing that really uh, struck for me was don't take anything personally. Mm. That was pivotal for me to, to really start. That's, that was the first place I could say I really started to apply in my mind. So when my husband and I would start getting to the point where we were going to argue, I would start telling myself, don't take this personally. This is a reflection of his reality. And my response to him is a reflection of my reality. And so I really started to, and it wasn't always easy. You know, when somebody yells at you, you want to yell back. But I started to see it. This is a hundred percent a perception thing. Mm. And everything that he's throwing at me, I have a choice on how I choose to respond and how I choose to be about it. That really was like the, the onset for me. And ever since then, it's just been continual learning, you know, continual uh, getting, getting my thoughts out of my head, looking at them and saying, you know, it, does this serve me? Mm -hmm. Does this serve my family? Does this serve my children? Does this serve my marriage? And most of the time it doesn't, you know, it's garbage thoughts that just have been clunking around in here my whole life. And, um, I'm just learning how to filter them and I'm learning to not allow them to take control of my life anymore. Is your, your relationship with your husband now is, is obviously it, it, it's strong, but do you think, um, has he been a massive support and role in what you've done moving forward, setting up your business, stepping out into the big wide world? He's everything. He's been Brilliant. everything. Um, he believes in me far more than I, I can't even articulate it. Um, he blows me away. And, and especially thinking back to that night and just how I must have humiliated him, how I'm, you know, how he must have felt to be on the receiving end of just the exorcism that was Nikki. <laughs> Exorcism, ex, exorcism yeah. of Nicolette Moore in the that, theater near you. Yes, yes, that's exactly what it felt like. Um, and and the fact that he stuck with me, you know, and what's and his name? Just uh, Jonathan. We'll give a big shout out to Jonathan because the the guy's needing a badge, probably. Yes, and an award. Yes, and it takes. I think yes. it takes a special person to support the loved one through all of that and all that growth. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we've been through a lot. He, we, our marriage started off awful and we, we it was just kind of like this compound effect over the years. And, um, that, that night on the bridge was really a, a, just a, a climax for me of all the, all the resentment I had towards him over the, you know, up to that, that was nine years of marriage at that point. Um, all the resentment I had built up over the years, all the disappointment, all the, all the stuff that he should have done as my husband that he didn't, you know, in, in my, like, in my in world. Your, in your woman's in, mind. Yeah, I, I get In that. my woman's mind. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah. So he, he's done a lot of inner work too, you know, so he's cute. Like he'll get up, we'll do yoga together. We'll do meditations awesome. together. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he's just amazing. I, and and our marriage really makes me feel whenever I hear women bitching about their husbands, talking about 
all the things their husband don't, don't, you know, do for them or whatever. It's like, I, it breaks my heart because I know if, if there are two people who love each other, even if they're like the, the ships in the night, you know, they're, they're not meeting each other. Um, but if they, they, if they love each other, it's totally salvageable. You know, it's just really like the, we need to stop being so self-centered and that's really what it is. We're so, we're so focused on us and our needs and, and our needs not being met. We forget that we need to take ownership of ourselves, of our perception of reality of, and, and how are we treating our spouse? You know, there's a, a mentor of mine who said, we're so worried about having a perfect spouse, the spouse doing, you know, showing up for us, but we, we too often forget to look at ourselves and say, are we being a perfect spouse? You know, and it's so important that we look to ourselves to create the solutions in our lives and in our marriages. Um, so, so my husband, I mean, we've just, we've been on this journey together. He's an incredible support system. You know, he's, he's helping me keep the kids quiet tonight for this talk. You know, he's, he's everything. You know, I, it, that's amazing here because I know that I look toward my wife in the same way. Um, and you know, I see my wife as probably my greatest teacher, uh, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't mm -hmm. be where I am without her. So, I mean, I, I, I'm very lucky that, that I have that support network, but of course we know that there's moms out there that are on their own and it doesn't preclude yeah. them from finding that love and it doesn't preclude them from being as successful as you are. Yeah. Uh, in, in not only your marriage but in your business. But what what would it what would you say to young mothers who perhaps are not in the same situation as you or I? What's the best bit of advice you would give them? They're not in our situation as far as as like they don't have the support system of a, a husband or okay. I would say look for support because it's available to you. Um you know maybe not in your family or your friends that you have locally, because that may be more challenging, especially if you're trying to do, uh, if you're, if you're going the entrepreneurial route and you want to step out on your own and create something for yourself, create a legacy for your family, and you don't have a, a spouse to support you, um, that can be extremely lonely and, and challenging, but there are networks out there that can support you and that will be there for you. And so look for it, actively seek it out. Um, the worst thing that you can do is stay at home, stay locked up and just dream about a better life. And you're one of those support networks. I mean, you're one of the, yes. you, that's one of the things you're doing. Yes. Yes. How, 100%. How can people so, get in, how can people get in touch with you, Nicola, if they want to, they want to like, you know, investigate working with you on a closer level, how can they get in touch with you? A hundred percent. Yeah. So you can always email uh, hello at nicolettemore.com is going to be the best way to get in touch with me. Um, and then on top of that, you can go to nicolettemore.com. Uh, currently as the time of this recording, we're in the middle of a transition. I'm trying to make my site a little bit better. I am not a technical person at all. So it's a little junky right now, but, um, getting that worked on to, to be a little bit more welcoming to guests. And then, um, I am launching the Q Salon in January. And so that's going to be a place, a safe haven for mamas that are trying to grow businesses and need some support, need some network. Um, the Q Salon is really going to be curated. I don't know that I'm going to accept everyone. However, it is going to be a place to grow in a very unique way that isn't really available digitally um, at this time. That's fantastic. And there's always the if you're going to, you have a you're going to have a landing page for that so people can maybe sign up for it. And Yeah, I can send you the link for that. Mm -hmm. Send me the link so we can put it out to people because I think that's important. You're, yeah, you're, and you and know, that's coming, I'm going to do... That's coming in January, isn't it? January is coming. Yes, yes. And I'm going to do a, a founder's launch over Black Friday weekend. It's going to be the cheapest that the pricing is going to be um, for these founders. So as a gift to your audience, I'll go ahead and extend that discount to you guys. And so I'll make sure and have that discount code 
available to you. Well, let's put it out there, especially to these uh, the, the young moms that's out there. I know that there's so many mothers yeah. that, that really want to step out and strive out exactly what you've done. Nicolette, yeah. tonight has been, you know, I am absolutely delighted that you have been my first guest on Attraction Market, and I think you bring an amazing not only amount of skills, but your experience. Not only that, you're a veteran, so you're already winning in my book anyway. So, so <laughs> had you been naval or air force, I'm, I'm only joking, guys. But um, <laughs> you have an amazing skill set. You have an amazing heart. You you vibrate very highly. You know you've got a, a great support system. And I would encourage any mother out there, or any, you know any businesswoman out there, I, I suppose, that really wants to reach out to you and to learn from you and to work with you to do that. Um, I couldn't have thought of a, a better guest to be my, especially because you're the person that also introduced me to Evan Carmichael. So, <laughs> Let's give him one more shout out. That book. Um, it's been absolutely, you, you should be writing your own book actually. It's, that's, I'll that's, get there. Yeah, you'll get there. Um, yeah. It's been amazing, and uh, I can't wait to share this wisdom and knowledge. We'll need to get you on again because there's so much. We could probably go on and talk and talk and talk on lots of different subjects. Um, but well, Thank you uh, so much. I appreciate I think, it. I think what you're offering, everybody, is amazing, and I think your backstory is amazing. So, And this is, this is the difference, ladies and gentlemen. When people are coaching people, they're coming from experience and life experience, not straight from college with no with a degree or a certificate and no life experience, you're getting it raw, you're getting it real. And anybody who's out there that's looking for success or looking to change their life, especially young mothers, get in touch with Nicolette. Nicolette, thank you so much for being an attraction marketing. Oh, thank you so much for having me. That's awesome.